and we're in perfect balance well-being in Russell Square. Um, loads of clients that we see are dealing with hypermobile joints and it's still a very misunderstood condition so I want to put one video together to explain what joint hypermobility syndrome is and how you can measure whether you're affected by it or not. So just to start guys, joint hypermobility syndrome describes a syndrome where joints are moving freely beyond the normal expected range of motion for the specific joints. Now, it mostly affects younger people because the natural flexibility and the joint mobility decreases with age. It's not exclusive to younger people, but it mostly affects them. Now, although it's benign, it can manifest itself through various really uncomfortable things like uh, tendonitis and bursitis caused by otherwise considered normal activities, uh, joint sprains and dislocations due to increased instability around the joint, um, pain of the soft tissue and in your joint, so, so something that you would describe with pain inside, say, your shoulder or your hip pain. Um, also, an early onset of osteoarthritis and carpal tunnel syndrome. So, various different syndr syndromes, but how do you actually know whether you're affected by it? Well, there's, you might have been previously described as double jointed or loose jointed, or you might have noticed that your joints bend further than your peers, your colleagues, or anyone you can compare yourself to. One of the tools that is clinically used to diagnose hypermobility is called Baiting Score Calculator. The maximum score is 9, but there are different cutoff points, and depending on the symptoms that you might present with the score, that will differ whether the diagnosis can come at a score of 1 or 4 or 5. So it can be quite tricky to self-diagnose and really know yourself whether you are hypermobile or not. And most importantly, how to then adapt your training and how to make sure you're safe, um, whether you play sports or you're on the gym floor. So it's always best to seek professional help and advice and at least assess the range of motion that you have and give you an advice on how to proceed with your training. So guys, if you have think that you might be affected by hypermobility or you've been told or you've been diagnosed that you have a joint hypermobility syndrome, please put your name in the comment section below and we're going to be in touch with you with advice and some tips on how to proceed.